Hi, I'm Marshall Jones. I'm the managing editor of infonews.ca. I'm here with my Kelowna reporter, Rob Monroe. Uh, we're talking about healthcare today. Uh, healthcare has been uh, one of the biggest issues for many, many years in BC and particularly in the interior, uh, where we continually find it difficult to find, recruit, and retain doctors. Uh, you found an interesting solution in, was it Sycamus, Rob? Yes, um, they started uh, seven or eight years ago uh, when their doctor was leaving and they couldn't find a replacement. And it's an issue that they were aware of then that the uh, College of Family Physicians has known for a long time. The model for how family doctors work is broken. They no longer want to be businesses, business people. They don't go to university and train to be run businesses. Mm. So what Sycamus said and the council were losing our doctor, we need to do something. So they bought the clinic. The municipality bought the clinic, ran it, and in the interim, they've gone from a doctor who retired to two and a half doctors. They have an administrator and staff who do all the paperwork, and they're at the point now that they are hoping to start next spring to build a $10 million new uh, health healing center uh, along with the First Nations uh, and expect to expand even more on um, that model. And they may have dentists and physios and others in that building, which ultimately they hope will not only pay for itself, but put enough money aside for a reserve fund to rebuild it when the time comes in the future. So was it, it was that simple? Just take care of the, the business side for the doctors so that they can do the thing that they went to school for and theoretically want to do, which is help people? It was that simple? I think that's a key. Uh, Peachland went for uh, four years, I believe, with the no doctors and a private um, couple went in and bought the facility or took over the building and took that same model on where they do the administration. And they they now have, um, I think, three doctors down there. And um, it seems to be a model that the college says should work. It should be done more often because that's why people don't go into family medicine. They, you know, as as the mayor of Peachland or the mayor of Sycamus told me, they don't want to buy toilet paper anymore. If they got nothing happening, they won't take the afternoon off. She also attributes part of it to the fact that Sycamus is a beautiful place to live as long as she's up late. Peachland could be the same thing. It's on a beautiful lake. Um, that Absolutely. helps with the recruiting, but I think that model is probably a bigger part of it. We, I wonder if this is a bit of a generational thing too, Rob. Like we see this same sort of thing among a lot of vet clinics. Uh, I don't know if people know this, but a lot of vet clinics now they're owned by like a corporate owner who seems corporate owners who seem to know vets don't want to have to run the business. They just want to take care of the animals and do their thing. So they end up in a uh, sort of a mutually beneficial agreement to share the. Uh, the running of that business. Does that sound similar to what we're dealing with here? Do you think that's a generational thing? Um, yes, it's a very much a, a work-life balance mm -hmm. kind of thing, whereas the older generation seem to be more dedicated and their entire lives would be absorbed in this. And younger people are saying, no, we want something better for ourselves and our families as well. Plus, I mean, running a business is a is a is just another headache that you wouldn't need on top of all the rest of this. Yeah, they work pretty hard, intense days, and to then have to sit there and, as they say, order the toilet paper and those sorts of things is sort of um, not what they want to do. So it sounds like this is an idea that could be perhaps replicated. Uh, perhaps other communities around here could use similar strategy? Well, I think it's done, being done on a private sector. You know, doctors are... are grouping together to have clinics and walk-ins and, and uh, joining forces in those kinds of ways. I think particularly with smaller communities where it may be harder to attract um, doctors, mm -hmm. it may be something that be, may become essential for some of these smaller communities because the dogs want to be in big centers. And the mm -hmm. mayor did say well, small town recruiting for doctors is one of the hardest. So, so the Sycamus essentially owns this this doctor's clinic and owns this is going to own this health clinic. Is that do I understand that correctly? They bought the practice. They are buying. They're building a, a facility. Um, Seventy eight percent of it, the ten million dollars, is coming from uh, grants from various government levels. 
but there is a burden on the taxpayer and they acknowledge that and the idea is if it proves successful that will be minimal or it will pay for itself is there any uh has there been any pushback that you're aware of that everybody's fine with this i suppose how do you argue against not having a doctor there was pushback actually on the location which is on main street because some people seem to think of it's supposed to be a park and uh again the mayor told me um there it was never designated as a park and there still be some green space there but um there doesn't seem to be it seems the council definitely embraces the idea we need health care in our community all right well this is the kind of creativity i think we're going to need to get through this kind of stuff uh hopefully we see some other towns maybe pick up this ball and run with it Okay, thanks, Rob, and uh, everybody else can read more on infonews.ca.